Okay, so I did promise you some slow motion stuff today. Didn't quite plan for it to go this way. Um, so this is um, one of Elon Musk's latest rockets blowing up. It's his, uh, whatever, his super heavy booster. And this is uh, Scott Manley posting on Twitter the, uh, you know, frame by frame slow motion version of it. In reality... Um, it's, it's about that speed. So there's a big ass explosion that comes out the bottom. And so the question is, you know, is this is this worse than it looks? Is it better than it looks? Uh, what the hell happened here? And there's stuff that I've got no idea what they're doing here, right? I really don't. But none of that actually really matters because I know the principles of what's going on and I can tell you all sorts of things about it without really knowing any of the details. And this is the most important one, and that's the size of the fireball that you get off this thing, right? So uh, we need to know the size of that fireball because that's going to tell us how much stuff has actually exploded here. And so is this going to be about the right size? This is going to be about the right size. That's going to be the base of our starship, and we know that's about 10 meters, yeah, and I'm a lazy man. I could go through all the, uh, you know, spherical volumes and all that sort of thing. We're not going to bother doing any of that. We're just going to assume that it's roughly that sort of size as a fireball, which is not far off. So it's basically, if that's 10 meters, this is 30 meters. So the volume of this thing is 30 meters by 30 meters by 30 meters. It's 30, 30 meters cubed. Yeah, so you bring all your zeros together. One, two, three. And three times three times three is 27. We're not bothering with any of the details here, so we're going to go for... It's 30,000 um, cubic meters is the volume of this fireball here, give or take. Uh, we, we, we don't need to... We don't really care greatly about the details. Now, uh, what we also know is this is all happening off the combustion of methane, right? That's the fuel that these rockets use. And that's going to be burned with oxygen. Oh, let's put some space in here for some extra numbers. So that's going to be burned with oxygen to give some carbon dioxide and some water. It's actually hidden slightly. That's H2O there. Better, good. <clears throat> and of course, we've got to balance all of this up. So uh, we've got four hydrogens here. So we're going to need a two there. And we've got, well, one O2 there. And um, another O2 there. No, we got two oxygens there. So yeah, it's two, two O2, yeah? So... Um, the thing that when you look at this, uh, is that right? Yeah, one carbon dioxide there and one pair of oxygens there. Okay, so uh, the, the thing that strikes you about all of this is um, all, my, all, if I give you a constant number of gas molecules, doesn't matter what they are, at one atmosphere, pressure, temperature, that sort of thing, they all occupy the same volume. So if I give you one volume of methane and two volumes of oxygen, and you get one volume of carbon dioxide and two volumes of steam out of this, well, you can see the number of moles of gas, the number of units of volume of gas you've got here, don't actually change at all. But what does change when you burn this stuff is the temperature. So this is at room temperature, which is about 300 Kelvin in terms of absolute temperature. Standard adiabatic flame temperatures for most combustion mixtures are about 3000 Kelvin. And so you can see that just from the temperature alone, that's what mostly gives you your, your, your fireball here. And that roughly equates, uh, you know, the volume goes... Uh, roughly with the temperature. So, you know, you increase the temperature by a factor of 10, you increase the volume by a factor of 10. So give or take, you get about a, a tenfold expansion when you actually burn this stuff. doesn't really matter whether you're burning it in 
a rocket engine or in a fuel air explosion, it's about the same. So um, this is of the volume of our fireball, which means the volume of our pre-explosion mixture is going to be about 3,000 meters cubed. A meter cubed of gas, give or take, weighs about a kilo, which means that it's roughly the equivalent of 3,000 kilos or three tons is roughly the size of that explosion. And if you, from memory, I think when these things are fully fueled, uh, they uh, the, the, this booster here is meant to have 4,000 tons in it or something, 3,000. So this is give or take a, this explosion here is one part in a thousand of the size of, you know, if one of these fully fueled rockets would actually explode. Now, there's some other stuff that we've got to bear in mind here. Um, this is, of course, assuming that they're bleeding out methane and pure oxygen, and it's just mixed up and it's finally exploded. Not necessarily what's happened here. It can be that you've got your oxygen. Uh, yeah, the methane must be there because that's what's giving you your fuel error explosion. Uh, but the oxygen you can get, you know, our atmosphere's got quite a lot of oxygen in it, you know, 20% or something, and you can get fuel air explosions that way. So uh, if you were to do it that way, um, you could have a, a one-fifth. You, you, our, our parameters here are probably something like 0 0.5 tonnes to 3 tonnes. That's roughly our size of this explosion uh, in terms of, you know, how much fuel and oxidizer you'd mix together. And also, when you take a look at this guy over here, um, methane weighs, you give or take, 20 atomic mass units and two oxygens. Oxygen's 32, two of them is 64, whatever, we'll call it 60. So it's, it's roughly um, one part in four um, of this explosive mixture is actually the fuel. Yeah, give or take. So, uh, yeah, when you come back here, you're looking at a quarter of this. So it's somewhere between 0 0.1 tons, your equivalent of methane burning, and I don't know, uh, what did I say? Four times down. Whatever, I'll just do, uh, yeah, can't do that. Um, fifth. Fifth times three. Fifth is 0 0.2 and 0 0.6, isn't it? Um, so that's roughly the size of the methane that were actually exploding in this explosion. In terms of if you were to actually sort of pack it up as a bomb, it would be zero to three tons. But, you know, most importantly, uh, what damage is this likely to do to your rocket, right? So this this is absolute chump change in terms of, uh, you know, how much energy this thing's meant to be burning if you were to get it to lift off as a rocket. Um, is it enough to destroy the rocket? Hell, yes. Um, so most importantly, the when when, when these things explode, you get this roughly 10 times increase in volume virtually instantaneously. And that gets you roughly 10 bar of pressure-ish. Um, 10 bar of additional pressure or differential pressure is enough to blow off limbs and all this sort of thing. It's, um, yeah, rough ballpark figures. Um, your lungs can handle a difference in pressure of about 0 0.1 atmospheres. That That's the best your lungs can do. Right? Uh, so once you're up to sort of 10 bar over pressure, you're like blowing up buildings and all that sort of thing. Um, so the thing is, the the inside of the rocket engines, I think they're, the, the, the actual inside of the, the, the combustion chambers, they're designed to run at, I, I remember it for the Saturn V engines, they ran at... 100 bar, something like that, 100 atmospheres. So the inside of the engine bells 
um, they'll take, um, okay, we'll stick in atmospheres. Atmospheres and bar are basically the same thing, but we'll stick with atmospheres. So uh, 10 is our um, explosion. Okay. Now, the real problem is that, so the inside of the engines, this really isn't a problem. What is a problem is the actual rest of the fuel tank here. This thing is basically a Coke can. Um, now, if I remember rightly, the Coke can is aided somewhat in that they're pressurized Coke cans. Pressurized Coke cans are much harder to damage than ones under vacuum. Um, so I, I think they run these things with two bar on the inside from memory. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, it, it, it can't be much more than that because otherwise, you know, they, they, they just explode. They, they, they can't be made strong enough. Um, but now you've got the problem that, um, if you've got two bar pressure there and all of a sudden you've got a partial loading of 10 bar on the outside, this, I think, is going to cause you all sorts of problems with the actual fuel tank. Now, the fuel tank doesn't actually greatly matter that much, of course, and it's just basically a big, empty grain silo sort of thing. But, um, yeah, does that mean that the, the grain silo is basically a write-off as a fuel carrier? Probably. This thing has to take pressure. Now, I've not looked at what happens after this. Uh, you, if you had actually managed to rupture this thing, um, then you would see it leaking out afterwards. And I, I've, I've not gone through the details like that. I go saying this is mostly just to give you the details of the, 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 the size of the fuel air explosion. You can get all off basically the size of the fireball pair. Um, and yeah, the rest is just a big burn off of stuff. You know, it's like on the grand scheme of things, this is chump change on what the rocket is, is meant to put out. It's, uh, yeah, like I was saying, give or take, it's one part in a, a thousand. Um, but the other problem that you might have is uh, you, you, the, the, the base of this thing looks something like that, and it's got gazillions of rocket engines on the base of this thing. Right, That's fine in itself. Yeah, These things are all designed to take pressure loadings uh, like this. The problem is that when you get this explosion, You've got differential loadings now where these things are subjected to really quite large sideway forces. You know, if you've got 10 bar pushing on it that way and atmospheric pressure pushing on it that way, then that's you, you, all the plumbing and all the mountings here will immediately be suspect. No one's going to actually do anything with this again until they've actually sort of checked it out. I mean, my main, my main worry would be, you know, if this is me, uh, you'll have damaged the plumbing, right? On the bottom of this thing, you've got a giant fuel tank and you've got lots of, of, of plumbing down here. That will have to be checked. And on top of that, um, uh, yeah, the, 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 the structural integrity of this tank would worry me. Um, yeah, you might you might recall that back in the days there was this uh, shuttle disaster where um, the you know, Challenger uh, had a defective O-ring on one of their joins, and it was the hot gas escaping through that that basically cut a hole in the rocket and just caused the whole thing to uh, fall apart. Uh, likewise, you really can't have you know holes. Uh, holes um occurring in your your pressurized tank that that's that's it that seems like bad news bears to me so um i mean for me this is it, it looks bad but um in in terms of is it a particularly big explosion for rockets no this is chump change this is a um minimalistic uh explosion of what do we say it's like um, somewhere between 100 and 500 kilos of methane. That's still on on, on munition sizes. This is still equivalent of a fairly decent bomb. And yeah, the overpressure here would certainly, you know, if there are people around here, they'd certainly be be killed by it and such like. Um, 
And yeah, I, I'm I'm not quite sure why, um, what the hell they were doing. But yeah, that that that's somebody else's problem. Uh, what I can tell you is, uh, yeah, the the really quite simple calculations you can go through to work out roughly the size of this explosion. Anyway, so hopefully I'll get back to my high speed footage. Um, uh, tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, drop a thumbs up on it, and I will see you next time.